Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Dragon Age Origins. Right, um, let's load. Off camera I did some upgrading again since so you guys didn't have to see it. Here I am in sexy red steel. Oh yes. Red does suit me. And my shield is in silver, right? I've whacked Zevin in some pious because he needed a better look than what he was wearing. That that look was terrible. And I've given Alistair the stolen <laughs> Arley Min shield and upgraded that to red steel. These guys, however, he can wield a red steel shield, but he can't actually wear the armor. Damn it, you're weak. I could totally arm wrestle you and win. In fact, I could arm wrestle Sten too and beat him right now. Yes, then look at me, you'll be beaten by the puny female. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. I know I need to... I can enchant his sword. Do I have anything to... Oh, that could do. Enchantment? Oh, enchantment, little guy. Enchantment! Oh, <laughs> little cutie. Okay. That'll do you for the time being, Stan. For now, you can at least look good like the rest of us. Jab someone with a sharp, cold sword. Hey, Wynn, how are you? So, tell me. How did you become a Grey Warden? How did I become a Grey Warden? You want the truth? Well, Arl Howe massacred my family. But Duncan helped me escape. Arl Rendon Howe? Mm -hmm. The Arl of Amaranthine? Yes. Why would he do such a thing to you? Because he's a bastard, that's why. And I'm the daughter of Bryce Coosland. The turn of High Ever. You are... You are the last of the Kooslands? I had no idea, my lady. No, don't. I'm... I'm just a Grey Warden now. Yes, I suppose so. You can no longer have a title, can you? No. But that does not mean you must forget utterly where you came from. Take heart, dear friend. You survived, even when you were not expected to. We do not know yet what lies in store for you, or the name you carry. It is not so bad, is it, being a Grey Warden? I will do my duty, but I will not forget what how did to my family. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps it was meant to be. Perhaps it was meant to be. That does not bring me comfort, when. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? Um, I guess it means I've been chosen to do something important? There's that, of course. But there's more to being a Grey Warden than killing Darkspawn and saving the world from the Blight. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. You mean to say that I serve as a protector? As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. And you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus it is you who serves, not they. Well, I suppose that makes sense. A good king, a true king, who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. I don't want power. I've never wanted it. If you live apart from others and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. 
the drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. And your wagging finger. Hey. Here I am. Here you are. So, you going to answer some questions then? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. So what does it take to become an assassin? Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training. The sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. <laughs> yes. But what, it doesn't take any special skill? I don't know about that. It's simply a slightly different skill set from your average killer, as I see it. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth, and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. Wow. Well, that sounds like it could be useful. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Hmm. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Hmm. Poke you again. Here I am. Here you are. <sighs> I'll interrogate you some more. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. <laughs> Why don't you tell me a little about Antiva? Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? Mm -hmm. The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. <laughs> don't you want to go back? <sighs> it's not really a matter of wanting to go back. I cannot go. At least not yet. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from some place comparable? I was born in Hyava, up in the north. Oh, I have never seen that place. I am sure it has its charms. It does. And its dogs. <laughs> oh, yes. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine, and its dark-haired beauties, and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. That has got to be some kind of euphemism. <laughs> it may as well be, but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home, more than anything else. It sounds like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? Oh, yes. The job being killing me, right? Yes, and now here I am. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden? A woman who then spares my life? I could not. <sighs> beautiful, is it? I say you are beautiful because it is true. Should I not? Uh... <laughs> I guess you can do, doesn't hurt to have a compliment? And glad I am to hear it. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. 
You can call me that. Doesn't mean you get anywhere with it, though. Here I am. Here you are. More questioning for you. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. So why did you want to leave the crows exactly? Well, now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? Well, that's true enough, but you didn't choose to join the crows? Hmm? To be truthful, I didn't even know the crows existed when I joined them. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased, for three sovereigns, I'm told, which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way, buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder, and if you do poorly in your training, you die. Wow. <laughs> that sounds awful. Oh, I don't know about that. The crows who are actually good enough to survive come to enjoy some of the benefits. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. Gets you women. And men. Or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. Ah. Uh. So what is it that you fancy exactly, hmm? I fancy many things. I fancy things that are beautiful and things that are strong. I fancy things that are dangerous and exciting. Would you be offended if I said I fancied you? <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> this is good to know. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. Won't the crows eventually find you? <laughs> eventually can be a very, very long time, if one plays one's cards right. True. Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. <laughs> And that was Everin. Alrighty. I think we will leave it there for now. When I return, I think I'll chat with Alistair, I'll give him his amulet. I think he deserves it now. Stay with me.